Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 300. And five. Please turn to it. Page number 305 and today's other number 72. We are in the process of solving practice part. Uh, we are in the process of solving the problems from practice test two. We started this thing yesterday. The very first problem that you see there on page 305, problem number six is what we are about to do. In problem number six, they basically tell us that a person weighs 220 pounds. 220 pounds and they want the weight of this person in metric units in other words they want to find out how many kilograms is that that's all we know that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds we learned this thing a long time ago we learned this thing on day number 37 on day 37 and 38 on day 37 and 38 when we discussed the units of measurements there were there were some units that I emphasize that I told you that you have to know by heart if you're going to take this exam. And one of those facts that you have to know by heart is this one right here, that, that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. Here we do not have 2.2 pounds, we have 220 pounds. That, 202, that 220 is there for a reason. These numbers do not fall from the sky. They're not picked at random. They are, they are, they are, they are designed in a certain, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are there there by design. Why was, not, why was this not 230 or 245? 220, we should immediately see that it's the exact multiple of 2.2. 2.2 times 100, 2.2 times 100 is 220, which means that 220, 220 pounds should be equal to 100 times, 100 times this amount. So if one kilo equals 2.2 pounds and 100 kilos, then 100 kilos One hundred kilogram will equal two hundred and twenty pounds. That's all. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Number seven. Number seven. In number seven, they tell us that uh, during an eight-hour shift, a quality inspector found three defective CD players in a batch of one hundred and thirty-five players. It's a proportion problem. So we have a defective player, defective players, and we have a total players. And we found we are told that we found three defective out of a total of 135. In a batch of 135 units, three of them were found to be defective. Assuming that this ratio holds, assuming that the uh, manufacturing method, the manner in which these things are manufactured, does not change and everything else stays the same, the question is how many defective units do we expect to find if we were to ship out 900 units? So how many defects do we, do we expect to find if we were to ship out 900 units? That's all it is. So we're going to cross multiply and solve for x. So x is simply going to be, if we multiply both sides by 900, if we multiply both sides by 900, we don't need this part anymore, so I'm going to erase this thing. If we multiply both sides by 900, this 900 is going to drop out and x equals this quantity right here. x equals... 3 times 900 over 135. Now what do you notice about 135? Long time ago. Again, these are these are things that you should make sure that you watch all of these videos day 1 through 60 as I keep emphasizing, as I keep repeating like a parrot. It is important. On day number 19, we learn this concept which says that if the sum of the digits, if the sum of the digits of a number, any number, if the sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. For example, 12 is divisible by 3. Why? Because if you were to take the sum of the digits of 12, is 1 plus 2, which is 3, and 3 of course is divisible by 3. This was a silly example because of course by looking at it we can tell that 12 is divisible by 3. But by same logic, we should be able to tell that 1212 is also divisible by 3. Because if you were to add up the digits, it's 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 6, and 6 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 1,212 is divisible by 3. Do you understand? And so is 
61,212 because this sum, the sum of the digits here again is divisible by, six, uh, by 3. Here we see 135. Do you see that? Did you notice it right away? 3 of course is divisible by 3 obviously and 1 plus 5 is 6 which means this number is divisible by 3 because if you were to take the sum of the digits the sum of the digits comes out to be 9 and 9 is divisible by 3 therefore 135 is divisible by 3 and we see a 3 on the top which means we can divide top and bottom by 3 you have to notice these things let's do that shall we so how many 3's how many 3's in a 1? 1 has no 3's 1 has no 3's that 1 is going to go and join the 3 becomes 13 how many 3's in a 13? 13 has 4 3's 4 3's are 12 4 3's are 12 the remaining one goes and joins this guy and becomes becomes 15 and how many 3's in a 15? 15 has 5 3's and that 3 drops out so now what we're left with at the bottom is 45 what we have on the top is 900 900 of course 900 of course is nothing but 900 of course is nothing but 90 times 2 isn't it? and of course we see 90 we see 45 why don't we divide top and bottom by 45 because 40, 90 is 2 times 45 there you go so this one drops out it becomes 1 and 90 turns into a 2 and this should have said 90 times 10 not 90 times 2 we had a 900 and the final answer is 2 times 10 or if you like we could have left this thing as we could have left this thing as 900 the way it was and divide the 90 by 45 90 has 2 45 and how many 45's in a 0? 0 has no 45's there you go, you see we got 20 again let's say we're done, x equals 20 in a batch of, in a batch of 900 units manufactured in the same fashion we, expect to, we, would, we should expect to find 45 defective, oh sorry, 20 defective units 20 defective units, that's all let's move on then that was question number 7 what do we have then? Question number eight. Question number eight is a tricky one. I'm warning you. I'll give you a second here. I'll get out of your way in case you need to. You need an un unobstructed view. Question number eight. In question number eight, we are told. A quote is marked down to 15% of its original price. The new price we are told, the new price we are told is $18. New price is the price after the markdown new price is $18 and the question simply is what was the original price or if you like what was the full price now the key here the key here the most important part here the most important element here is to pay very very close attention to the words it's one word that's going to make all the difference in the world when you're dealing with the percentage problem. In the percentage problem you have to pay attention to words like from, to, by, those are important words. We're going from this number to that number, what's the, the decrease is by how much. Here, the most important word here is this, it says a, co a code is marked down, marked down, it does not say, it does not say a code is marked down by 15%. It is, does not say it's marked down by 15%, it says it is marked down to 15%. That's it, it is marked down to 15%, not by 15%. What does it mean if something is marked down to 15%? What it means is that if the original price of the code was $100, if the original price of the code was $100, the fact that it's been marked down to 15% of its original price, we are there telling us that the same code is now selling for only $15. They're giving us an 85% discount. It's a markdown, a markdown to 15% represents a discount of 85%. They're literally giving it away. And as a result, as a result, 
the new price we are told is $18. So the new price, new price represents represents 15% of the of the original price. This represents 15% of the original price because it is marked down to 15%. And the new price we are told is $18. In other words, in other words, this, this implies that $18 equals 15% of the full price. 15% of the full price. Are you still with me? Okay, stay with me in the story. I shouldn't have I should not have written so liberally because now I have no not, not enough rope. Now listen what happens now. Okay, we can do this problem in a very traditional way, in a very orthodox way, very classical way, very geeky, very nerdy, very academic way, or you can just follow here the quick and dirty way. What we're going to do next is break this up into three parts and break this up into three parts. 18 can be written as 6 plus 6 plus 6, 6 plus 6 plus 6 dollars is equal to, we are told, is equal to 15%, which means it is equal to 5% plus 5% plus 5%. What does it tell us? It tells us that 5% equals $6. If 5% equals $6, then 10% must equal $12. I'm going, to, I'm going to write on the top. I really don't want to erase this part here. So let's continue here. So from this logic, 5% equals $6. 5% equals $6. That tells us, this implies that 10% must equal $12. $12. We're not interested in 10%. We want to find out the full price, which is the 100%. And therefore, 100% will be 10 times as much. Or $120. Well, that's it. That's all there is. One more time. Okay, let's, let's recapitulate what we, what we have just done. Here's the trick. Here, here's what's going on. It says, a code is marked down to 15% of its original price, not by. It is marked down to 15%. For example, if I tell you that uh, they are having a sale and they have marked down the price of all the items in, in, in the store to, to 1%, which means if the original thing was selling for $100, now the same thing is not selling for $99, it is selling for $1. Because whatever the original price was, it has been marked down to 1%. Here it's marked down to 15%. And as a result, the new price is $18, which means 15%, 15 15% of the original price represents $18. $18 is simply 6 plus 6 plus 6. 15% is simply 5 plus 5 plus 5, which means 5 plus 5, 10%, 10% of the price must be equal to $12. If 10% equals $12, then 100% will be 10 times as much. 10 times 12 is 120. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.